What is going on, Governor? She's cool here, and today we're going to talk about taking out the Crusader Fortress, which we have accomplished in Kingdom 51. If you like videos where we talk about KVK, you should definitely like and subscribe because our continent is hot. It's got to be the hot, hottest continent in Rise of Kingdoms, and we are a sponsored creator in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, we're going to talk all about why this Crusader Fort matters in just a minute. The first thing we got to show you is the alliances of Kingdom 51 taking down the fort. So I happened to be at work, but a couple folks took footage. Mojo took footage. Link will be in the description for that. Shiko took footage, and I'm going to use that in a second with me over uh, top of it, explaining what's going on. Uh, that uh, really appreciate you're taking that footage. Let's cut to that now. Okay, here we go. We've cut to the footage. What you can see here is Shiko's perspective. They are in Endgame, an alliance of Kingdom 51, great place to be. Anyways, you can see here Fleisch leading the charge on the Crusader Fort, Saladin as the primary, kicking off the battle, and I believe it's Cao Cao as the secondary. Now, some number of players are also going to make solo attacks here. I don't know that I would advise the solo attacks, but you can see Punisher coming in from Endgame with their rally. Now, as well, Minamoto leading the charge. There it is. Cao Cao is the secondary. You can see the AoE from the fortress doing a ton of damage. And Locos in VYG coming in with the third rally. We had three rallies for this particular activity strategically placed to come from different directions. And alliances strategically located across the four different lanes in the Crusader Fortress so that they can kill these Supreme Elite Guardians that spawn in now for our kingdom. And we are a pretty evolved and advanced kingdom, uh, old and a lot of high-tech players. Uh, this was a pretty straightforward battle. You've got your three rallies that take the damage, and then boom, you kill these Guardians whenever they spawn. You reinforce your rally, keeping those topped off, and this is easy peasy. Easy peasy. For younger kingdoms that don't have as many T5, this is going to be an interesting fight. This is going to be a really interesting fight. Now, it's important to mention that when we did this, we fired off a number of buffs. We fired off the buff for 30% extra barbarian damage, the uh, alliance skill. Uh, I'm sure Fleisch has a number of buffs going, including a rune and an attack buff and all that sort of good stuff that makes this possible. And Fleisch has maxed uh, tech for cavalry. This is full cavalry rallies that are going on right now. Full cavalry rallies going on right now. So this is going really quite well. Um, really quite well. The amount of damage that the Crusader Fort takes, I believe, is pretty substantially diminished when the Guardians are up. There may even be some healing involved that can happen there, so uh, it's very important that you take those out pretty darn quickly. Um, so only a couple minutes left here. I suppose the last thing I want to talk about with regard to this Crusader Fort is that uh, you need to time your rallies so that they land at about the same time. You can see how long it's going to take your rally to get to where it's going when you queue the rally up in the first place. Uh, just make sure that, you know, it's a T5 person leading the rally and they have some T5 troops in there, so the true speed of the rally is reflected. Um, there we go, more Guardians in. Those have got to get killed. Um, and the technique that we like to use is you have someone join the rally from really far away. And then you sort of use that as a countdown, and you can be on voice with the other rally leaders. And based on the time staggering that you want to do, once everybody else has arrived in the rally, you've got your one far away army. You kick them out of the rally when you actually want to launch the rally attack. So anyways, you can see the madness over here. At this point, I believe we're just swarming down the uh, Crusader Fort. We're saying like, all right, it's just about over. Let's go ham. Everybody runs in. Um, it's got very little health left. And, you know, you are timed in this fight. There is a time limit for getting this done. Uh, so there you go. We've done it. Crusader Fort captured. A couple of folks accidentally attacking after the uh, fray had ended. But there it is. There it is. Legion Forever captured the Crusader Fort. I think that's really not representative. They ought to you know, announcing there, everyone who had a rally going on, but whatever, there it is. 
Crusader Fort down. Okay, so now we're back to my screen. Let's talk about why this Crusader Fort is critical, critical for KVK. Um, if you go in, now it opens up the event Pass Glory, and Pass Glory is where, in a course of three stages, you can make donations to your Crusader Fort, and when you do that, it levels it up. Now, leveling it up is pretty substantial, but first, let's talk about what you get for making these donations in the first place. You get a Crusader Supply Chest, and there are different levels of this chest based on the level of your Crusader Fort, and you're powering it back up. And the donations you can make are across all of the different resources, including gems. Now, gem donations are unlimited to the number that you can make. Uh, you get way more progress toward the completion of your Crusader Fort, but you're only getting three Crusader supply chests. We'll take a look at the loot that's contained in with those, within those. I don't know that it's really good value, so there's no reason to go ham doing that, but I just want to talk for a moment about what you should be donating. Now, for players that feel like, ah, I'm never going to make it to T5, I have all this gold, I should just get rid of it, then sure, you can donate gold, and that seems like a fine choice. If you are a T5 player, you're about to spend a bunch of speed-ups um, either getting to T5 or upgrading your troops from T4 to T5, you're actually going to need a lot of gold. And if we look at the ratio here, 300,000 wood versus 150,000 gold, um, that's not a particularly favorable ratio. So how do we know that? How do we know that? It takes the same amount of time to farm any type of resource uh, from either a, a level 5 node or a level 6 node or a level 7 node. In other words, it takes the same amount of time to finish farming a level 7 or a level 5, level 6 uh, food node as it would a gold node. So if we just compare for a moment uh, how many resources you'd get, here we go, from, let's say, you know, level 5 wood is... 756,000, and gold is 252,000. So it's like a third, it's like a third of the, the amount of resources contained over here. So what I'm basically saying is you're actually donating a little bit more uh, by picking gold than by picking the other resources. It's only a small amount. It probably doesn't matter to you, especially if your account is relatively young and you're very far away from T5s, then yeah, like donate gold, that's the play. So just to show what those donations look like, you know, I'm donating wood right now because I've got a lot of troops that need food and stone to upgrade to T5, so bada boom, there you go. It contributes toward the progress of upgrading it to the next level. We got a Crusader supply chest, and this donation frequency is limited in the same way that Alliance tech donations are limited. It's not a shared number of donations across them, but it's on the same frequency, I believe. Uh, it's once every 30 minutes that you can make another donation to Pass Glory. Now, the rewards for the kingdom are insane. Hooey! Okay, so the rewards for the kingdom include troop attack, defense, and health at 15% along with rebuilding Stage 1 rewards. We'll see what those are. Um, for Stage 2, 100% hospital capacity. Yeah, baby. That's that's the thing we need, right? People are going to get zeroed. They're going to go to bed, be out of position, myself included potentially, right? And they're going to get zeroed. So that's really, really great. 25% gathering speed, marvelous. And uh, Stage 2 rewards when you complete that. Stage 3 Big reward is that you can teleport to other alliances' territories within your own kingdom, which is awesome. You can work together in really nice ways. Um, and there's a stage three reward chest. It's worth mentioning at the conclusion of the, I think, nine-day window over which this event takes place. Uh, then the Crusader Ford is automatically completed, and everybody gets the rewards for having completed it. I, I guess it's generally a good thing that they'll automatically complete it. Um, I think it's a good thing. People, people really need that hospital capacity. If you're a kingdom that's far behind, you like really, really need the hospital capacity. Um, and you're going to get all of those benefits without making the donations. Now, let's go to the inventory and talk about whether or not these items are all that exciting. If we open these up in, let's say, groups of five, you can get a sense of like, actually, let's do it in groups of three. If I spent 500 gems to get three of these chests, what would I have gotten? Um, in this case... I would have got 100 gems back and two 500 action point potions. I mean, that's okay, but not amazing. Let's, let's crack it again. A gold key, two hours of speed ups, and 20,000 experience. Like, is that worth 
Actually, technically, that's worth more than 500 gems. The gold keys, gold keys are kind of expensive. Um, you can get it, like, I don't know, it's like I saw it 60% off in the Mysterious Merchant today for 480 gems. So technically, that's value, but unless you're actually buying gems from the Mysterious Merchant, then I don't know that it's really that much value. We'll crack it again. Here's an example of a not as exciting pull. Silver key and two 60-minute speed-ups and 1,000 action points. Like, is that worth? I guess 1,000 action points. That's actually worth 500 gems. I don't know. Maybe it's not as bad. Oh, here's a bad one. <laughs> less exciting. Boom. I mean, like, less exciting. I don't think the value's actually that bad. I don't think the value is actually that bad. The, the thing is, like, do you have lots of gems? And if you do, then, like, actually, maybe this is okay. I don't know. I haven't actually sat down to, like, really seriously do the math. I'll point out, however, if, the, if like, if you've got your research completely maxed out, if you've got your research completely maxed out, this gives a ton of research-related speed-ups, and, pff, like, I don't know that you really need those. Uh, it's my hope that the supply chest you get might change a little bit as the past glory levels up a little bit so like i don't know if there's a more advanced level of this crusader supply chest or if it's the same for every level of this event i guess we'll see um if we did a gem donation real quick bada boom we got three more of those let's see what we got um i don't know was that worth 500 gems if we go to the vip shop if we go to the vip shop bada boom Let's see here. So 500,000 resources is like 200 gems, right? So like, it, I don't think it's the best way to spend your gems. I don't think it's the best way to spend your gems. If you have a ton of gems and you're spending money like crazy in the game and you don't care, like, yeah, yeah, I guess you could do it. Um, but here's the thing. If you level up your Crusader Fort early, like what's the big advantage of that? It, it, it completes every for everybody automatically within nine days. So... I don't know how exciting that is. The rewards, however, are exciting for completing the tiers of the Crusader Fort. And uh, I don't know. We'll see if we're the first one to get there. If we are, we get to choose our color of all of the Alliance flags from our kingdom, which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Right now, we pick the time for the Crusader Fort when everybody could enjoy it together. So we did the Crusader Fort later than many of the... Uh, kingdoms in our continent. We're at 38% completion right now, even though we started much, much later, which in hindsight, like, maybe that's a mistake. Maybe that's a mistake. Um, let's see. Kingdom 50 is at 37%. Um, so we started behind, and now I guess we're a, a little bit ahead. Uh, let's see here. Kingdom 52. Uh, we're ahead of them now. And the game crashed. Okay, and Kingdom 53. Let's just get a peek over here. I think they were the first ones to knock it out. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Where is it at? 33%. Cool. Cool. Anyways, you get the idea. Um, I'm excited for KVK. Once this event completes, there's some important stuff we need to talk about. First of all, if you look at the Twilight portion of the KVK tab, uh, you can see here that uh, when we take out the Crusader Fort, we take out the Crusader Fort, it opens up level 6 Barbarian Forts, and it opens up uh, after two days, the level 4 pass sort of opens, it, it unlocks is the word, and then 24 hours later, it's no longer protected, it can be attacked. So, in two and a half days, uh, the the gates really open for proper, proper KVK madness. I'll just establish, again, that uh, Kingdom 51 is a, is a diplomacy first strategy toward KVK. If you want to work together, like, look, let's do it. We can mutually benefit. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I can't understand the wisdom behind wanting to battle. Honestly, it seems like an like really weird to me that people would want to battle in this area. Um, it seems weird to me because, like, let's say you are successful in beating back the opposing kingdom, right? So you beat them back, and then what? You make your way into the center, and what happens when you're in the center and you're contesting this thing is like. They're gonna they're gonna give you hell back over here, right? 
I don't know. It, I, I don't understand the wisdom of battling in this first zone, but I'm, I would be absolutely, utterly shocked if there was not absolute mayhem in this continent. <laughs> uh, we'll be ready. I suppose we'll be ready. We prefer prosperous peace for everybody. Make friends. But uh, I don't know. It seems like other kingdoms are choosing their choices, and it's not. <laughs> it's uh, not peace. So... If you enjoyed this video, definitely like and subscribe. It's going to get hot as heck in Kingdom 51. A lot of cool stuff to follow. We're back on Chiskel, which is freaking exciting. Boom, baby. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.